there are some things that barefoot shoes just aren't right for, you know, like tennis or pickleball, you know, court sports, basketball, any of those things, because, you know, you just need support and all that lateral control, things like that. Oh, really? Well, we're going to find out on today's episode of The Movement Movement, the podcast for people who want to know the truth about what it takes to have a happy, healthy, strong body starting feet first, you know, those things at the end of your legs. And we break down the propaganda and the mythology and the flat out lies you may have been told about what it takes to run or walk or play or do yoga or CrossFit or maybe play court sports and to do that enjoyably and efficiently and effectively. And uh, did I say enjoyably? I know I did because it's a trick question. If you're not having fun, do something different until you are because you're not going to keep it up if you're not having a good time. I am Stephen Sashin, co-founder, co-CEO of Zero Shoes, and we call this the movement movement because we, including you, I'll tell you more about that in a second, are creating a movement about natural movement, letting your body do what it's made to do instead of getting in the way, which can cause a whole bunch of problems. So how do we, it includes you, help with the movement? Uh, it's simple. Spread the word. So here's an easy way to do it. Go to our website, www.jointhemovementmovement.com. Nothing you need to do to join. There's no secret handshake. There's no money involved. Just the domain that I got. But you will find previous episodes of the podcast, all the ways you can find us on social media and engage with us there and all the different places you can find the podcast if you don't like the one that brought you here to begin with. In short, give us a review, thumbs up, like, uh, you know, five star something or other. Hit the bell icon on YouTube. You know the gist. If you want to be part of the tribe, just subscribe. All right, let's jump in uh, to the other side of the world. We're going to be talking with Pierce. Pierce, do me a favor. Tell people who you are and what you're doing here. Yeah, so I run a gym in uh, oh, in wait, Brisbane. Start with, start with who you are. Who am I? So yeah, I'm man. Pierce. I have been, uh, been cruising around uh, with movement-related stuff for about 15 years. Um, prior to that, I was just doing it without getting uh, any payment for it. Yeah. And so I run a gym and I go around teaching people about original strength and then also for strong first and GMB, which are all fantastic systems that I love. Do you want to do me a favor? I mean, that's how we got introduced. Do you want to kind of do like touch on the, those three things and describe what they are and how you've put them together in your current practice, if you will? Sure. So uh, original strength undergirds everything that I do. So original strength is all about helping the body to move the way it was designed to be moved, taking the brakes off, using the movements that we use as kids to take ourselves from, from the sedentary, broken people that we often have today to being the, the vibrant, capable people that we're all capable of being. So original strength undergirds everything. And then on top of that, I like to stack uh, strong first. And Strong First is a, an organization that's really good at taking what, what elite power athletes do and then bring it down and making it, ses- it accessible to everyday people. It's also really good at taking complex movements and, and giving safe progression so that people don't have um, these gaps where they, they have to make a jump that's not available to them. And then finally, uh, GMB, um, GMB is all about physical autonomy. That's that's their, their thing. It's the idea that you should be able to do the things that your body wants to do. And uh, and they give really accessible, I call it, call it gymnastic style movements for everybody because they just, there's an entry point that will work for you with GMB stuff. Uh, it's funny you bring that up. I did a recording earlier today, just so happened, with a mm. friend of mine who's a research physical therapist and clinical physical therapist. And we were talking about the value of being an all around athlete, being, you know, strong sort of for everything that you might encounter. And I I brought up that I just got an email from a guy who's a sprinting coach showing videos from the Polish weightlifting team, the Olympic weightlifting team. And these guys were better gymnasts than anyone I've ever seen. Well, not anyone I've ever yeah, seen, right. but certainly better than your average high school gymnast. They were doing mm. things that had nothing to do with weightlifting, just to become mm. all around strong, capable, movement friendly people that translated into their weightlifting. Because, you know, yeah. it, it just, if all you're doing is that one thing, any little variation can set you off if you're strong across the board. And starting mm. at the, with the idea of original strength, just doing the, for lack of a better term, baby level things. For the, and and sure. I mean that they're simple. Some of these things yeah. from original strength, not simple. Um, but then, and then building in, you know, the part that you mentioned about uh, from strong first, which of course you have a kettlebell on your shirt and that's a hint yes. about what strong first is all about. And for people who haven't heard that episode, check it out because it's with the guy who is one of the first uh, kettlebell teachers in America and super, super interesting. But I, but I, I, I am kind of curious because I have this image in my head of babies 
you know, hurling kettlebells around. So clearly, mm -hmm. tell me, I'm just desperately curious, how did you find that interaction? What does that look like? In terms of, uh, of like, marrying strong first and yeah, original like, strength? Yes, the original yeah. strength idea of, let's call them baby-inspired movements, and then uh, taking a 24K kettlebell and doing whatever you do with that. Yeah, I mean, so I, I first off, um, I actually came into, I found Tim through the kettlebells. So uh, Tim is the founder of Original Strength, as you, you're aware. So, you know, for me, I spent the time working with the kettlebells and doing that stuff. And for the majority of people, this, the progressions that I had were fantastic. But there was a subset of people whose bodies just didn't, they just didn't have access to their body. They didn't know how it was meant to move. They couldn't feel what was going on. And so I spent uh, well over 20000 Australian dollars. Uh, these days, it's about... Uh, 50 cents US, but it's. I was going to say $6.23. I think the exchange rates changed. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but I spent at the time, it was equivalent, about 20 grand US, trying to find ways to, to help these people that, that, that just didn't move naturally. Mm. Um, and what I found was, was as we went through that, I had the, I brought Tim and Jeff out to Australia. And so at the time they came across and they ran a day and a half workshop. We were about six hours into that workshop and I had people coming up to me and talking about, you know, I've had this, this hip issue when I've squatted and it's been with me for years and all of a sudden it's just gone. And, uh, you know, I couldn't lift my arm overhead without discomfort and now it's, it's not hurting me. And so the other money wasn't wasted, but it certainly helped to highlight just how incredibly effective our body doing what it's meant to do is. And so original strength sets the foundation. It's the roots of the tree. And that allows us to do whatever we want above the surface. I love it. That was a brilliant and poetic answer to the question. So, um, so, 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 uh, before we get to the whole question about court sports and minimalist footwear, mm -hmm. when did you get hip to the whole idea of minimalist slash barefoot footwear? Yeah, so I um have uh, grown up when I was when I was two or three. Mum reckons that I was just about walking on on my ankles, oh, so wow. I was so flat footed. So I was in orthotics from the time I was about four or five, um, and so I was was in orthotics and I wore those and uh, and around I reckon two thousand and eight, I um I first ran into to my first pair of of minimalist shoes. And I like the idea of them. I'd been training barefoot for a little while because I'd, I'd been looking at the kettlebells, but I didn't actually, sorry. Well, wait, I got to pause. 2008, there was only a couple of options. Um, Vivo Barefoot, who was previously Terra Plana, they had some stuff-ish um, and mm. then Five Fingers. And there wasn't uh, much else. There was uh, the New Balance Minimus that was out, which was then a mostly minimalist shoe, not so much anymore. Um, uh, there's something else that, was there something else that you found? No, no, it was, it was the first two that you'd mentioned there. So, there so the five fingers, I had the option and I, I ran into those first, um, and they were cool, but there's something, uh, socially awkward about walking around with your toes out. So you're suggesting that you didn't enjoy the birth control aspect of wearing those? <laughs> uh, I didn't mind it, but, uh, but I was in the early stages of courtship with my wife and um and she was more self-conscious about it so you know, in, in the early days when we started zero shoes and i bumped into someone who had said they've been wearing five fingers i would say so when did they start to fall apart and uh is your relationship being strained by the smell <laughs> and there was answers to both of those questions at the time you know for, my for first me, set of five fingers were incredibly resilient oh yeah yeah, you, you they stand. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, for me, had they fit my feet, we would have never started zero shoes, but they never quite fit my feet. But I tried them like every six months for a couple of years. Like when you go to the fridge late at night and there's nothing that you want, and then you come back five minutes later and there's, of course, still nothing that you want, but you're yeah. acting like the fridge is a psychic replicator from Star Trek. So, yeah. um, all right. So anyway, so that's what got you. So actually, I want to back up because- this is an interesting thing. You've been you were in orthotics from the time you were four. What made you even think to try a minimalist shoe? Because for most people, that idea seems absurd if they're in the situation that you're describing. 
Yeah, I mean, reading Pavel's stuff. So Pavel from Strong First, he talked about the receptors in our foot, talked about the value of the arch and, and the strength of the, of the foot. And I thought, well, if I can can put myself in a position where I can use my feet intentionally when I'm lifting weight, then surely uh, I can can learn to walk in a way that facilitates a stable base for me as well. So you were burdened with the um, psychological problem called logical thinking. Yes, it's it's a common issue. Sometimes yeah, I I have found that it uh, does not help you make friends very often. <laughs> um, <laughs> not the way one would think. My, my uh, this is a tangent. My best friend called me like thirty years ago to inform me that my enjoyment of letting people know when they are factually inaccurate uh, does not make them like me. <laughs> mm. I said, oh, that explains it. It took a theology degree for me to realize that people's feelings were important. <laughs> yeah. If you could just make some notes about that, that'd be really helpful. <laughs> yeah. um, so, 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 all right. So you got hip to, uh, you got yourself in a pair of five fingers and what'd you discover? Yeah. Look, I, I found, I mean, it, it made logical sense. So initially um, I used them and it was not a major issue. I didn't use them for sport. Um, that didn't didn't make sense to me because I, I had so many reps and it was I didn't think that my feet were going to be strong enough to handle the load, which as time's gone on, I'm really happy with that choice. And it, it was a stage over a few years where I would would wear orthotics in specific like sports specific specific shoes, and then uh, eventually we were probably I think it was probably 2011. I was interacting with a gentleman who is a marathon runner. Um, and he was he was very good. I think he's uh, his his best time was around two hours ten minutes. That's so like, more than pretty good. Fast. Yeah. yeah. And so he said, "Look, he looked at my gait. He looked at what I was doing. He said, I think you just need to to rip the band aid off and start spending time doing things that are a little bit more energetic in barefoot shoes." He said at the time, "You you walk like you're you think you're a big man." because I, I, I would have my feet out to the side wandering around like I was a bodybuilder. I, I don't have a bodybuilder physique. Um, <laughs> Hold on, wait. Sorry, you just gave me another flashback. I'm remembering like being in second or third grade and literally, so what am I, I don't know, 10? Uh, no, no, seven, eight, something like that. And I'm walking around the halls trying to figure out how to walk you know, like someone who is a bigger person because I was tiny and I'm like, sure. you know, how, how far out do my arms have to go? How much am I like? I have this vivid memory of trying to figure out how to walk and be physically impressive, which it would be humiliating and embarrassing if I got humiliated or embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, no, well, apparently that's what I was doing uh, subconsciously. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I think it was just me hunting for stability. Because I've been in the orthotics, I've never actually Ooh. learned to be stable in and of myself. Interesting. But yeah, so I, I spent that time there. And then over time, I transitioned to, you know, playing touch football, which is is similar to, to rugby, but just with tags in Australia. It's its own game. Um, I, sh I shifted across to some innovates that have the cleats on them for that. And they were really great. And then I shifted across to some some uh, some other shoes for futsal um, and and then some other shoes for, for basketball. And so as I made that transition, um, my feet were tired, but they, they handled it just fine. So what did you notice over time? Like how long until you felt, you know, comfortable enough to not think about wearing some shoe with a big thick sole, et cetera, et cetera? You know, what was the evolution like for you? Oh, it was pretty quick. Once I'd shifted to, and those sports, I did one at a time. This was probably over the course of, of 18 months. But within that sport, it was two or three weeks. And then I would feel pretty natural in the shoe. The fatigue, it was it was just like any old muscle soreness after you've exercised. Um, Perfect. Yeah. 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 And I love that you recognized it that way. Were you, um, how do I want to put it? You know, making the transition is different for, everybody when people say how long till i'm going to be able to do fill in the blank in a pair of barefoot shoes mm -hmm. i go i don't know um there's actually it's an old indian story slash joke of a guy he's you know walking and doesn't know how much longer he has to walk and sees a farmer and yells to the farmer hey farmer how how uh how long to bombay 
And I'm not going to mm-hmm. do an Indian accent because people get mad at me, even though I can do it really well. Um, and a bunch of Indian friends. Um, and uh, and the farmer looks at the guy and then just goes back to farming. And the guy's like confused. He yells again, farmer, how, how long to Bombay? And the farmer looks at him and, and just goes back to farming. And the guy just storms off and the farmer yells, two hours. And the guy stops and goes, what the... I asked you twice how long to Bombay. You wouldn't tell me. Why suddenly when I'm leaving, do you tell me? And the farmer says, oh, I didn't know how fast you walked. And so, you know, we've all got our our thing. And it sounds like you are relatively, not that this is, um, that what you're describing is in any way necessarily unusual, but I have a sneaking suspicion what I'm about to say is accurate and let me know. Uh, I have a suspicion that you're pretty good at picking up movement patterns. I am now. Ah, interesting. So, yeah. I can only assume it's it's original strength. Mm. Um, absolutely, 100%. So I first ran into the original strength stuff when it was becoming bulletproof in 2010. Prior to that, I like sport, but I was not good. I was a solid B-team player. And so, you know, I, I would have to win because I was able to figure out a strategy that was was ahead of the person in front of me, and that was the only chance I had. So... It was 2010. It would have been probably 2012, 2013 before I started to go, hang on, I'm I'm starting to actually get things. It might have even been later than that. I, I'm going to say it was. It, it might have been, been five or six years later uh, after I started that, that I started to notice I was picking things up faster than other people. Yeah. When I started to learn snowboarding, I was on the bunny slope for over a day. Yeah, I... I um, I am not a natural athlete, but I've become much closer to it. That is wonderful to hear because many people do think of their childhood experience as a, not even a limitation, but just like, that's the way it is. I'm not yeah. someone who can fill in the blank. Um, uh, that So I love that you discovered that. By the way, um, I did a podcast episode with Tim Anderson from Original Strength sometime in the past, early on, probably when I just reached out to the people that I knew well um, to Get them on here so uh, people who are listening, you can go track that down. So, okay, let's go to the thing that we teased everybody with at the top of this for the fun of it. At what point did you decide to even try some sort of court sport? And, of course, I want to know which one in a pair sure. of those shoes. Yeah, I mean, the, the first one would have been futsal. First one would have been futsal in probably, probably 2015, 2016. Pause there. For uh, Americans who have no idea what you just said, please. Sure. <laughs> uh, so there, it, there are a few who will, but not a whole lot. Yeah, it's a form of indoor soccer. Um, so in Australia, we've got two different forms of indoor soccer. One is is indoor soccer, which has um, nets on the side and the ball can bounce off it. And this one's on a court, like a basketball court. And essentially you play soccer, but it's, but it's indoors. It's super oh, fast. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's crazy fast. I mean, the ball is doing insane things that doesn't happen when you're playing out on a field. It, it It's a blast. Yeah. And, and if you haven't, do me a favor. This is going to be funny because I'm not going to do it. Uh, I'm going to ask you to spell futsal so people can look it up and see what we're talking about. Because I think they're going to go, oh, I want to try that because it's fun. Yeah, futsal is great. It is F-U-T-S-A-L. Um, so I'm guessing it's some sort of Portuguese word that we've adopted along the way well that's you know it never occurred to me to look that up by the way uh for no apparent reason i'm going to say i'm going to give you a challenge at some point in the next 24 hours see if you're going to work highlight into a conversation what does highlight mean oh you don't know highlight so i'm just thinking about odd sports and somehow Mm. i made a reference to highlight a while ago highlight uh oh yeah yeah how to describe this it's like the fastest sport in the world, super, super mm. dangerous. So you have this big curved thing that you catch the ball in. So think like, um, I'm trying to think of a good example. Think like, like a book of lacrosse almost, but without uh, the stick. Kind of in a way, but no, it's like, just imagine if your entire arm was just a giant curve is the best way I can say okay. holding that thing. It's a big, big, I don't remember what the hell they call it. Uh, it's a big, big thing. And, mm. um, but think like, um, uh, racquetball, except that A, it's a much bigger space and B, you have this thing that whips a ball at like 120 miles an hour. And wow. it is insane. So now you have to look up Highlight, 8 J A I L A I don't remember, something like that. It'll get you started. Okay. And then then 
for no reason, work it into a conversation. And I say this okay. is a challenge for everybody because it was just an obscure reference that I made like yesterday, the day before. And um, I like obscure references. So yeah. now here's my challenge. Find a way to work that in. Anyway, sorry. So backing up to futsal. So that was the, your first attempt. And again, what made you think, okay, let's give this a whirl. Did you have any trepidation, any concerns, any, or just like, yeah, why not? I think I just felt really good playing touch football in the, the, the minimalist cleats. And so it seemed like a logical progression. I'd spent already spent years at this point using minimalist shoes in everyday life. My wife had tricked me what tricked me my wife liked running and so she'd convinced me to run a couple of 10k races with her and uh, and so i'd run those in the minimalist shoes with with absolutely no ill effect at all and yeah so it just it was just the logical progression to give it a try i love uh, what you just said because um even though she did trick you into it and i got your back on that one um the the thing that many people do is they rush a process based on some imaginary goal like hey i want to run a marathon in three days and i just switched to minimal shoes like whoa whoa slow down sparky so it sounds like for you it was just this kind of continual evolution as you found yourself comfortable it's like oh here's something what the hell yeah yeah and i but i think i think also good strength training yeah you have very active feet yep i've been been using good strength training methodology for half a decade, over half a decade at this point. So I'd been not just walking around day to day in minimalist shoes, but I'd been teaching my feet how to be strong as well. And so I, I had a good foundation and then I'd experimented along the way. So futsal rolled out and it just made sense. Um, okay. And it was good. All right. This is going to, is there anything else before we get to the magic of court sports? I mean, not really basketball, but let's let's get to let's to it. the sport that I play these days. Um, so at these days, I spend an inordinate amount of time playing pickleball. Um, and you're going to say it. it's the P word. It is yeah. you know, fastest growing source of injuries in America. And but but and this is relevant. For, I say it as a relevant comment for this conversation. The way it's I don't know what's happening on the other side of the planet, but here. People are talking about the fact that there's all these pickleball injuries in the fastest growing sport in America, um, mm. or what's affectionately referred to as giant ping pong or tiny tennis. And they're saying it's because of the sport. And mm. I say that is not the case. I say it's because of the shoes that people are wearing for said sport. Uh, so when you decided to start playing pickleball in a minimal shoe, what did you discover? Yeah, well, for starters, I didn't have any shoes that weren't minimalist shoes at this point. So that <laughs> if I wanted to play pickleball, this was the option that I had. So I started playing and I thought, you know what? On this surface, it's an artificial surface. There aren't many surfaces like this on Earth. I'm going to get some shoes that have a little bit more cushioning to them. So I went out and I bought ones that were what? They had one centimeter of sole. Um, so I, I figured I hadn't done anything crazy, but uh, literally within... So I'd been playing for about three months, went and got these shoes with a little bit more sole. Within about two weeks, my knees were hurting, my ankles were hurting. I I couldn't interact with the ground properly once I had extra sole on my shoe. Yep. So it was it for me, it was obviously the wrong choice to try and 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 build up. Whereas I've played uh, an inordinate amount of hours in the meantime um of pickleball with literally the smallest, lightest, minimalist shoe I can find. Uh, I burn through them in about every two months. Like it's, I'm just wearing the soles through. Um, and it doesn't matter what shoes I've got. They, 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 I, I'm, I'm burning them up playing pickleball. Um, but, uh, we'll have to see what we can do about that. Yeah. But, uh, I absolutely cannot, cannot play with, with a, a built up sole. If I do, my body doesn't like it. It is, it's, it's not a win for me. It's funny. My wife and I have friends who we met soon after we started the company. So about 13 years ago, never wore our shoes. We never asked them. They never said anything. Didn't even come up in conversation would have never occurred to me. They moved away um, a little while ago and got into pickleball. 
And mm-hmm. they, the husband and wife each sent us basically the same email that said, you know, we didn't never wore your shoes. We've been playing pickleball, been getting a bunch of injuries. And mm-hmm. at least, you know, we thought maybe it's the shoes because we've been hanging out with you guys so long that that was at least in our mind. So we mm-hmm. went to Zappos.com uh, and American Footwear online seller. And yep. look for pickleball and, you know, a couple of your shoes were on the list of things they recommended. Mm. So we bought them all because Zappos has a free return policy. Yeah, so they said, you know, tried on the first 12 shoes that weren't yours. I eh, didn't really like them. They didn't weren't comfortable. Mm. Put on yours and went, oh, my God, these are incredibly comfortable. But I don't think we can play in these. Mm. So they said, all right, let's just try it. We'll go out. We'll bring our regular shoes just in case. Let's see what happens. And they each mm. said the same thing, totally independently. They said, forgot I was even wearing them. And within mm. a week, all those you know, issues that I had gone and they have not looked back. And, you know, backing up to the whole thing where people are saying pickleball is the cause of injuries. Like this is not rocket science. The higher you get off the ground, the tippier you are. Um, Mm. And just like basketball players, you catch an edge on a shoe with a flared sole, like the one I am holding up in my hand right now. And you're going to fall over it and there goes your ankle or, Mm. you know, you're just sliding on the foam or you're squeezing your toes together. I mean, all the things that are problematic with a no, quote normal shoe for running exacerbated even worse for something like a court sport. And people are not even questioning that right now. It's just mind blowing. Yeah. Particularly in a, a sport where you're shifting laterally, yeah. people who haven't necessarily played sport in a long time, you know, that we see so many people that do hurt themselves playing pickleball are the ones who have come in. It's the first weekend they've ever played it. They're not particularly stable. They're walking around on brand new clouds that they've bought and their connection to the floor is, is imaginary. And yeah. so it's not shocking when they, they shift to the side and then their feet get caught up and the, they, they tumble off. It's, um, that's absolutely where we see it happen. Yeah. It never occurred to me that the fact that it is, you know, giant ping pong mini tennis um, gives people a false sense of their ability to do it. Because they're having, you know, flashbacks to being younger and they're not as young as they, their brain is telling them. I think that may be a part of the problem as well. Like just jumping in and going for it faster and harder than they are ready for in general. I think so. I think the other issue, it's a really accessible game. Yeah. You play the first game that you play and you can, you can kind of figure out the game to a reasonable level, you know, the, the first time you play it. There's obviously levels beyond that, which is why people keep playing. But it's it's not hard to become base level competent in it. Yeah, and that leads to the false sense of security that you're talking about. Mm, that's a good point. Our not directly next door neighbors, because if that were true, I'd shoot myself. But like four houses down, neighbors have a court in their backyard, and yeah. um, I mean, happily, we don't hear them banging around on it. But yeah. you know, talk about accessible. You could build a pickleball court in your backyard. It's not mm-hmm. overwhelming. I mean, it's silly, but um, you know, you can't do that with a tennis court very easily unless you have a lot of money. Yeah, it's a it's a big difference in size, isn't it? Yes, it is. And so, um, so how long have you been playing pickleball in in shoes that are actually good for you? Uh, yeah, um, just over two years now. Oh wow! So you were yeah. an early adopter. I was in Australia. For Australia, that's early on. I wish I'd started six months earlier. I would have been that much better for when the pro leagues arrived in Australia. Um, well, that, well, that's an interesting question. You know, everyone's trying to create some pro league and make it make it a big thing like tennis. Mm. And I've talked to a number of people who go, yeah, pickleball is not like that. Pickleball, people aren't going to watch pickleball on TV. People who play it don't watch it on TV. They're not going to go watch, you know, pro players. It's a community thing. It's an individual thing. Um, so... You know, there may be some money on the circuit because people think there might be money on the circuit. So right now people are getting paid. But I'm really curious to see how it evolves because it's such so much more a personal thing than a spectator thing. Yeah, I I think I saw something the other day that there's 36 million people in the U.S. playing it and they're getting about 4 million people to watch it worldwide. Yeah. I mean, that's proof in the pudding. And, you know, we were just at an event, um, uh, a, a... an event called the running event. It's actually for shoe companies selling into running shoe stores. But there mm-hmm. were three companies who staked their entire 
everything on pickleball. It's like, we sponsor these three pickleball guys. We're making a shoe for these four pickleball guys for the professional, whatever pickleball thing. And I'm going, yeah, you just, you just threw your money away. No one cares about that. It's a brave bet. Yeah. It was, it was a hell of a bet. Um, Mm. So we'll see where that goes. So when you're out on the court, um, which is a term that I almost use loosely given how tiny it is when you're out on that little tiny thing on the patch. Yeah. On the, on the patch that people play on. Um, how do people respond to you when you're in a minimalist shoe? I mean, I know with runners early on, they would say, you can't do that as you know, we ran right by them. What happens on the court? Yeah. I mean, initially people were a bit surprised They they would look at it and go, do you get hurt doing that? Like, are, are your feet okay? Do you like, do you roll your ankle much? And those were, were the common questions. Nowadays, I guess I've been around long enough that I'm, I'm a, a known oddity. But so that's the big, I mean, the, the impetus for my question was less, you know, how much are they hassling you than how much are people going, huh, maybe this is something I should try. Are you starting to see more people try it? Or is it just like you're the lone minimalist on the court? At the moment, it's just me. Um, Crazy. Why do you think but- that is? Well, I, I don't know. I think that for, for a lot of people, adopting it too quickly would be a, a problem. Yeah. If you're, I think for everyone, everyone should be walking around day to day in, in minimalist shoes. You know, it's unless your job is one where, where it's so image focused that you just can't find a, a legitimate piece, everyone else, that they're, 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 there's little benefit to them to not be, being in minimalist shoes. But I think playing sport, I think there's a good logic to following a, a structured introduction into it. Sure. Um, so even if that was for them to warm up in minimal shoes and then hop into their club hoppers after that. But uh, I, I think some of them may adapt. I know there's a physio, a, phys, a physical therapist. Sorry, we call them physiotherapists. Yeah, physio. right? Just look, you know, make people work for everyone. Every, every now and then make people work for it. That's what I wanted to yeah. say. Yeah. So we've got a physio who I think at some point may decide to 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 jump across. And there's people, but I, I think they're probably all a little bit unsure. And and they may also just view me as an extreme outlier. Yeah. I'm fairly fit. I I'm very enthusiastic when I'm running around the court. I, I seem like an unusual character, which is possibly accurate. <laughs> one one day I'm walking into the office, uh, I'm in the parking lot. I catch my reflection in the window. I'm wearing a pair of, you know, ratty shorts that I've had, uh, God, you know, since the 1940s, probably. Um, mm-hmm. I've got my Zero Shoes t-shirt on, but it was not in its best shape. Um, my hair was particularly large that day. I'm in mm-hmm. bare feet and I catch my reflection in the mirror and I just stop dead in my tracks. I go, oh, I'm that guy. Oh, I did not know that. <laughs> Look, marriage has helped me to to look far more like a like someone with a home. <laughs> um, wait, I'm not sure if you're saying that as a comparison to me, but I'll, I'll take it either way. I um, marriage is. I'm, I'm thrilled that my wife, as much as she would love for me to dress like a human being, still stays with me after 20 plus years. Given that I dress like I'm a high school kid, because I just don't care. So I'm you know yeah. t-shirts and shorts. I have three pairs of identical pants that I'm currently just rotating because I like them and I yeah. have to think and I don't care. Now she likes the pants. There's a nice pants, but cool. uh, five days a week, I'm in a zero. She's t-shirt and she puts up with me. Yeah. No, look, uh, this is my only, no, I have two shirts that are not black. <laughs> this is one of them. Um, and then a couple, like last year I found a pair of shorts that I like. So I bought eight pairs of those. And so yeah. I'll just grab those out. Well, you know, and I only I only decided to buy two new pairs of pants basically to fill out that collection of now I have three uh, yeah. because it was a pain in the ass when those were getting washed and I had to wear something else that I didn't like as much. Yeah. So um, at some point I will go through my closet and get rid of everything I haven't worn in at least two years, which will reduce my closet to effectively nothing. Yeah. Which yeah. will make my wife happy because that will give her more room in the closet for her incredible wardrobe which you know mm. is a beautiful thing that i do not understand at all <laughs> oh look i'd rather she was looking pretty than that i was looking pretty 
Absolutely. I'm, I like it when people notice her and aren't paying any attention to me. It's just, it's yeah. much more fun that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Although I do have the problem with, you know, having the long curly hair thing where people do recognize me and that it's become a bit of a brand. Like Lena and I have been in a number of times somewhere where someone will walk up to her as we're standing next to each other and say to her, isn't that the guy that was on Shark Tank? It's like, she goes, yeah, I'm standing right next to him the whole time. So, uh, so th there is that component and she told me she'd leave me if I cut it. So, oh, that's, that's a good incentive to leave alone. I trust that woman implicitly. I'm not going to test that theory. My yeah. <laughs> words are rambling, but what the hell my father offered her a thousand dollars for every inch I permanently cut off. And she wow. said, I don't think you get it. If you did that, I'd stop sleeping with him. And <laughs> it was the perfect thing to say, just to stop my dad totally in his tracks. Uh, yeah. Nothing else would have done. So. Well, well, it's the most expensive couple of thousand you'd ever earn, right? Yeah, crazy, absolutely crazy. So, okay, so you've been playing pickleball in a minimalist shoe, which is awesome. Um, is there something next on your horizon, or are you just like all pickleball all the time? Uh, look, I want to get reasonably good at it. Um, we have a draft coming up for um, one of the, the leagues in Australia soon, so I'm hoping to get selected for that. Um, what, would that what would that mean? What If you're in the league, then what happens? Yeah, so it would mean that I'd be a part of a team and we'd play in uh, 10 pool rounds before we, we played in the finals. And if we won, then, then there's a reasonable reasonable prize for that. But it's it would be just a chance to compete with some of the better players um, along the East Coast of Australia. That is a very interesting thing about pickleball that I really do like. And I don't play yet, at least, mostly because I'm still sprinting and I don't want to do anything where I could do something stupid and then you know, oh. be off the track. But I think having a competitive outlet is really important. And th there's very few chances, especially as you get older, to find mm -hmm. something where you can demonstrate a certain level of competence and be competitive in a way that's mm -hmm. enjoyable. I mean, how old are you now? I am 38. Uh, what is that in US dollars? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, not that old. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, so at sixty-one, you know, one of the things that I love about Masters Track is we're all stupidly competitive, but we're old mm -hmm. enough to know how stupid it is, and therefore it makes it fun. It's like, yeah. oh, um, we're going to go out here, we're going to race. Uh, there's no prize money involved, and we just want to kick each other's butts. That's yeah. cool. Let's have a good time. Yeah, collaborative comp competition. You're, you're friends with the people that you compete against yeah. generally. Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, because again, it's like having a secret handshake. It's like, oh, you're another idiot out here doing this stupid thing. Welcome to the club. You're my friend. I've literally never met anyone on the track who I don't adore because, yeah. you know, we're all doing this crazy, crazy thing. Yeah. Great. Yeah, uh, so, go ahead. Sorry. No, I, I agree. And I think that's part of part of what I, I've i enjoyed is, you know, one of the best players in Australia. He, he was playing in the, the top professional league most recently was – He's in his sixties. Oh wow! Um, and 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 Martin's a good player. He's, he's a very good player. I don't know about pickleball, but I do know from tennis. Um, I knew some older players, and they were just so good that they'd run you around the court. I mean, it was very rare that you'd get a shot that they wouldn't be able. I mean, they're rarely having to run to make a shot because they're not giving you the opportunity to return something in a way that would make them run. I mean, they're playing yeah. you not playing with you. Well, and I mean, it's pickleball. The, the best version of pickleball is doubles. All right. And, and in, in, um, in tennis right now, the number one doubles pairing in the world is 43 and 36. Interesting. So, you know, when, when the whole sport is on a smaller court, you, you remove some of the power aspect by forcing people back that little bit. All of a sudden, the, the capacity for people to be really good that little bit older go, goes up hugely because it's about being smart, not just athletic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really interesting. I um, uh, I mean, sports like that, I, I've never, I frankly never really gotten into a sport where it's not just me. Not that I'm, you know, narcissistic or self involved. It's not that. It's just that I was always an individual sport athlete. It's like if I'm going to win, I want it to be on because I worked harder than and did better than that guy, not because, you know, they, played me in some way but yeah, you got um, the right team or, yeah 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 but i i love what you're saying about it oh man i'm gonna have to knock on my neighbor's door at some point this summer see see what happens but it it, it, it 
it, it is admittedly interesting, not just because it's, you know, fastest growing, blah, 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 blah. But it's mm. something that I've just never done at all. And so I like trying things that I've never done. But me enough too. about me. Back to you for the win. So, uh, so sorry, when again are the tryouts? So there won't be tryouts. There'll be a draft on the 3rd of February. So wait, how does that work? There's no tryouts, but there's a draft? So basically a lot of the players will have submitted applications um, and the, the captains will have seen people playing around the place. Ah. Uh, and so they'll draw from a pool of known or or unknown players, but whose pedigree they'll be able to figure out from what they've put forward. I see. Oh, that's fascinating. Well, um, once again, when? <laughs> Third of Feb. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Right around the corner. Yeah, real soon. Holy smokes. Good luck. Um, that would be That would be really quite fascinating. So... Yeah. Uh, did we leave anything out either about your professional journey of what you're doing with original strength and strong first end kettlebells in GMB or your court sports soon to be semi-professional world, hopefully, or anything else that we can think of? No, look, I, I think that's that's about it. At some point in the not too distant future, I'm hoping to have resources available for people who are looking to to be safe and stable on the pickleball court um, because... You know, we want people doing the things they want to do healthily and safely. That's about it. That's enough. I'll tell you my thing that I do with people who are who I bump into who are committed to wearing uh, what I refer to as stupid shoes or foot coffins is oh. I I don't try to convince them to do anything that interferes with what they think they need that shoe for. So oh. I'll say something like when I talk to mostly even runners. I go, cool, mm -hmm. run whatever the hell you want. But when you're done, the most valuable thing you can do to keep your feet and the rest of your body happy is some active recovery, which involves moving, getting the circulation going, getting the muscles mm -hmm. still, you know, moving and getting the the um, metabolites out of the, just flushed out of there. And the best thing you can do for that is being like a minimal shoe or barefoot. And oh, by the way, there's research showing that just walking in a minimal shoe builds foot strength as much as doing an actual foot exercise program, which you would never do, even though it only takes five minutes and you could do it mm. while you're watching TV. Yeah. So this way it takes no no time out of your life. Oh, and by mm. the way, if you're a runner, that exercise program, the strength you get from that is shown to reduce running injuries by 250%. So yeah. you know, just get out of your regular shoes, wear these for recovery and for building strength. And oh, by the way, it'll make those crazy expensive shoes you just bought last longer. And people are like, oh, okay. Because I'm, you know, they think I'm going to try and talk them out of running in some giant thick maximal shoe, which I would love to, but I have found that as an ineffective method of communicating. Back to my thing of I like to tell people when they're factually inaccurate, and that does not make me friends. So sure. you know, here's my way of meeting them, knowing that it's a Trojan horse, knowing that once they start wearing these things, they're going to go, oh, I can't put on those other shoes that squeeze my toes and I can't feel the ground and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Oh, that, that makes so much sense. It's um, give, it, give it a whirl. Let me know if it works. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I love that. The, just the idea that someone can step off the court, let their toes splay and then let their Achilles have a rest from being jacked up. So, yeah. so good. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's, it's pretty effective in real life. I'm trying to make it more effective in non-real life at scale, you know, through ads and everything else, just to get people, yeah. my, my whole goal with, with ads is to get people to go, huh, as long as I can get them to consider something, we're on the right mm. path. And so uh, it's the argument that I make to, not the argument, it's the point that I make to a number of people if like, when they get a pair of our shoes and they send us an email about, oh my God, these changed my life in 24 hours. I go, yeah, you might want to keep that to yourself for a couple of weeks because mm. otherwise you're going to piss off your friends, I promise you. Like, wait till it's kind of sunk in and they're asking you. Otherwise, yeah. it's, you know, your evangelism will not necessarily work to your advantage. Mm -hmm. Or it will. What do I know? You know, just you know, everyone's going to do their own thing. But either way. Well, Piers, um, this has been a total, total pleasure. And thank you for getting up early to chat. And if people want to get in touch with you, see what you're up to, whether they're, doesn't matter where they are on the planet. Um, how can they do that? Yeah, so there, there's a website, which is uh, www.qldkettlebells.com.au, which is, is the business. Or you can find me on Instagram, uh, which is at 
E I E R S K W A N. My super easy to spell name. <laughs> well, we'll put that in the show notes. But on the for the first website, what, what was it? QLD kettlebells? Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. So QLD QLD is the abbreviation for our state, Queensland. Yep, got it. And kettlebells, plural or singular? I didn't hear. Uh, plural. Perfect. QLD kettlebells. So. Um, Anyway, once again, thank you for everybody else. You know, check out what Piers is up to. I love the reason that I even brought him slash you talking to you, Piers, on here is because, you know, normally I I, I don't want to talk to anyone who hasn't kind of figured out something unique on their own from whatever they're, wherever it took them. And I think, and you had, I mean, putting together original strength and kettlebells alone, the strong first thing, that in, in and of itself was like, okay, most people wouldn't go there. And so I really like that. But also knowing that you had... Uh, done some experiments in minimalism that are above and beyond the average human as well. I knew that we have had a lot, a lot of fun with that. So I hope people do uh, hunt you down and ask you uh, what happens with the draft and follow you to the extent that they can if, if you're drafted. And we'll take it all from there. So uh, once again, absolute pleasure. Thanks, Dave. And for everybody else, just a reminder, head over to www.jointhemovementmovement.com. That way you'll find previous episodes, all the places you can engage with us on social media, um, other places to get the podcast if you don't like the one you currently found this on or if you didn't have one. And if you have any questions, comments, requests, um, I say this every time, if you can find someone who wants to talk to me who thinks I have a case of cranial rectal reorientation syndrome, the phrase I'm looking to make popular, uh, you can drop me an email. I'm at move, M-O-V-E, at join the movement, movement.com. But Either way, most importantly, go out, have fun, and live life feet first.